شايل القلم Hello everyone, and today's talk is going to be with filmmaker Wissam Tanyos and producer Christian Aid. Hello Wissam, hello, hello Christian. Hello, how are you? Good, so Wissam, you're in Beirut? Yes, and, I'm in Beirut. Yes, and Christian, you're in France right now, right? Sure. So Wissam, tell us more about yourself. Uh, my name is Wissam Tanyos. I'm a Lebanese uh, director and, uh, and screenwriter. Uh, I work uh, as a freelance director and I also make movies. I've done two short films uh, before, Aftermath and, uh, and the Departures. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are from there as my first uh, feature documentary that we started filming uh, in 2015 and that we premiered in the uh, International Film Festival uh, Rotterdam in 2020. And uh, we won the best uh, nonfiction award and the best Arab film in the Cairo Film Festival in December 2020. Okay, cool. And the first two short movies were fiction, right? And this is a documentary. One of them was, the, was a, short, a short fiction and the, the other one was a short documentary. Uh, so it's a fiction and a documentary. Okay, cool. Was the short documentary uh, like the first step of the feature or it has nothing to do with it? Oh, no, it had nothing to do. It had uh, maybe like, uh, it was also a personal intimate story, but it mm. had nothing to do with, uh, with the subject I tackled in the, in the feature film. I didn't like it. 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 من ورا جدي يعني مين ما بيسالني بقول له نحن بنشتغل بالمصلحه من زمان جدي كان يشتغل بالمصلحه وبعدين من بعده بابا عم يشتغل بالمصلحه مو بس يعني بيقولوا لك انه نحن عن جد ابا عن جد بنشتغل بالمصلحه يعني بابا وجدي يعني هلا انا من بعده شوف السلاله وانا بتمنى اقدر انجز لبعدين شيء كثير كبير واولادي يستفيدوا منه بابا اخذ المصلحه من ابوه فما بده تموت بابا من النوع اللي بده يعطي شيء لاولاده شيء منه وانا هيك بحب المستقبل يعني هلا هون الشيء اللي بدي اعمله بالسويد بدي اعمله شيء لقد يعني لقدام يستفيدوا منه منه اولادي يعني يمكن مثلا شركتي تصير كبيره او ينحكى فيها يعني بالعالم مثلا او بهالبلد انه اولاده بعدين يشتغلوا بهالمجال لو ما اشتغلوا بايدهم مثلي بالخشب بس انه يشتغلوا بمجال بمجال العائله ما فيك تتعامل مع الخشب مثل اي اداه ثانيه مثل الحديد مثل هي، الخشب بده حنيه بدك تحس بالخشبه انت عم تشتغل فيها. بدك تحس اذا هي بارمه مقوصه فاتله رطبه خشنه انت بدك تحس بالخشبه، كان يقول لي لما كان يعني انا وبالشغل عم بشتغل على المكنات يقول لي حس بالخشبه انت عم تشتغل فيها. اذا ما حسيت فيها بتروح ايديك على المكنات والاوايل. ف 
فهذا الشيء كثير مأثر فيه فأنا بحس بالخشبة لما أشتغل فيه لأنه هي الخشبة هو عم تحكي معه طمن عليه اوقات كثير بكون متضايق ما بحكي انه اذا بدي اتقل له بده يكون بده يتضايق هو كثير بده كيف بتعود على التليفون بس ما تقول له شو بتعمل؟ بقعد وصفهم كثير بقعد وصفهم بالبيت بالحيطان بقعد بصفهم بتذكر وبصير بتفرج على صوره الموضوع ما فيك تخبر حدا عنه، مع مين بدك تحكي تقعد تشكي له عمه، مين بدك تقول؟ مو لانه انا كبير مثلا ماني ولد صغير وعندق وابكي او اشكي، بس هذا شيء شخصي ما فيك تشاركه مع حدا ثاني يعني. يعني انا ما يعني ما في دق له لبابا لانه بدي ضايقه وكثير كثير بيتاثر هو. ليش عم تخبرني اياه لك؟ يعني انت عايش هالشعور. عم تعيش برا. فائد ابوك من فتره كثير طويله. Could you tell us more about your short documentary? Yeah, so Aftermath was, uh, it's also a personal intimate story. It's about uh, a few uh, few months after the death of my sister. I lost my sister when I was 18 and uh, she was, uh, she was uh, uh, 27 back then. And uh, it's the film is about the consequences, the aftermath after a death of a close person. So the yeah. camera was inside the house and the main characters of the film were my mother, mm. uh, my brother and myself. So okay. it's about coping with death and uh, uh, what happens uh, right after. Okay. So, did you did you have their acceptance for the for the short documentary before starting filming, or did you start filming it and then afterwards you asked them about how how did it happen? No, of course. Like uh, um, I I uh, I had their I had their consent. They they knew that I'm filming uh, a, a short film, and they know what's what's the subject about. Uh, obviously, okay. they didn't know where where I'm going with the subject or what I'm gonna do with the film. Mm. But uh, but they knew, and the camera was inside the house. I was preparing. Uh, I made some interviews that I didn't film before 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 we filmed the the short. Mm. So yeah, I had their their consent, of course. Okay, cool. Thank you, Issam. Let's go now to Christian. Christian, tell us more about yourself. I know that you're you live in Paris right now. So just tell us. I, I know that you you've produced and you've helped like in many movies, especially with with Abud production. Tell us more about yourself. Uh, so yeah, my name is Christian Aid. I'm uh, originally Lebanese. I started working in cinema in 2010 with Abud Productions uh, as a production coordinator, and then I became a production supervisor on many feature films. And recently I produced, uh, as a main producer, the, the film of Wissam Tanyos and as a co-producer with uh, George Shukair, mm -hmm. the film of Joanna Haji Touma and uh, Khalil Jrej, Memory Box, that premiered in Berlinale this year. Uh, I moved to Paris in 2015, but I didn't uh, cut the link with the Lebanese cinema and Lebanese cinema production, so I continued working with Abboud from here. And I continued working on the, on the project I started uh, before coming. And um, actually, when we Sam like proposed the, the 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 film, and he came to me through common friends, like to tell me I need a producer to do this film. It was actually like few days after I left from Lebanon to Paris to settle in a new city. Mm. And uh, it's a funny thing because like the film is also about two characters who left the, their home country to to build new life in new city. So you know, like it was a nice coincidence. And this is how I decided to produce like uh, my first film as a producer. Okay, and what was really, even though Wissam is listening to us right now, but what was, <laughs> <laughs> what was really like the, the, what was the feeling or what made you say, I'm going to produce this movie? Uh, actually, when, like, when Wissam contacted me first, I asked him to send me some written material and share with me some visual material he had already shot. Mm. Uh, from the film. So he sent me a proposal, a written proposal, and he sent me a trailer, a five minutes trailer. 
And, uh, you know, when you receive such things, you start by watching the trailer and the trailer immediately, like, uh, it took my attention. I felt that there is a very interesting story to tell. I felt that the characters are super strong. And I felt that Wissam has, a, like, a, you know, he has a certain cinematic approach that's very interesting for the, the, the intimate story he's telling. Mm. And then later on, I read the, you know, I like, um, I read the dossier and I saw that he made two short films and I watched the two films. And I saw that he has a real talent telling, like, you know, very emotional stories. And since the short documentary, as Wissam said, is also very personal, you can feel that as a filmmaker, he, he can deal with personal stories in a very good way. And he can, you know, control it in a way where um, it leads to a more universal way of telling the story. And from the short fiction, I felt that the cinematic language and his way of conveying emotions is quite strong. And this is when I said, yeah, I, I would like to embark on this journey. Yeah. And I came to Lebanon and we like, the first thing I wanted to do is like to meet with someone in person because, you know, like a, a future film is a long-term engagement and adventure. Sure. Yeah. So it's important to get along with the person you're working with. So we met yeah. with Wissam and it was a very, 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 very nice encounter. And uh, this is when we decided officially to, you know, to start working uh, like um, in a very real way on the film. Okay, cool. And th this question is for you both. When when you first met, did you have this vision of the documentary? Because I know that you filmed this doc. It took a lot of time to finish the documentary. And plus, so if because I've watched it and it's it's over over the years, over the course of the years. So um, did you have a vision, a clear vision? Because when we go, because I'm you know I'm filmmaker as well. So when, when filmmakers and producers go to, to to try to find fundings. The first thing they ask us is, do you have a clear vision? Let us know, is it really super important to have this clear vision? Or, or how was it in, you, in this case, in the case of this documentary? With some, do you want to start? Yeah, actually, um, we didn't uh, we didn't pressure ourselves for the timeline. We weren't like uh, saying that we need to finish the film in, a, in two months or in a year or in two. We were working because like uh, I have a job, I, I, I freelance and uh, same for, uh, for Christian. So we needed also to work and then take some distance from the film, then come back then because we couldn't like uh, free all our time just to make the film because we had our life uh, going on and uh, the film was shot over over five a course of uh, five years so it's a lot of time uh, it's yeah, I was imagine you cannot stop working and then do only do the movie yeah yeah so I was 25 when I started it and also like uh, Christian was uh, we were younger and then we grew up with the film so we couldn't stop our lives just uh, although the film was taking our, all our energy and all yeah. our uh, our 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 attention mm. but um, but we didn't pressure ourselves we we wanted actually our main vision was to make an ageless film we wanted the film to age well we wanted the film uh, to make a film that we can defend that we like even after 10 years when we watch it we say that um this is what we wanted to do and that the people will relate to the story even after many years to, to, yeah. Uh, so we wanted to make uh, an ageless film, a, a film that we can defend, a story that con convince, convinces us and uh, something that, uh, for example, an, an Italian that can watch in 10 years, an Italian who's moving to Colombia or to mm -hmm. the US, and, and when he looks at the film, he says, oh, these characters, I can relate to the story of these two characters. Okay. So that was our starting and ending point. Okay. What about yeah, you? to be honest, uh, the, the, the process of uh, the making of Wissam's film was a bit special because Wissam started shooting even before having a producer or having any kind of funding yeah. because he received this phone call from his cousin saying we're leaving from Syria to Europe and taking the boats illegally. And this is when he started filming. And when he came to me and he started looking for a producer, it was like he already shot 30% or 40% of the film. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is what like he came with a lot of rushes and we said we, we need to structure a bit before submitting to funds. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, as you said, it's quite important to have a clear vision mm -hmm. and to have, a, to have a clear structure and like convince the funds that, yeah, we know where the film is going and we know what the film is about. So the first step we did, like we, we decided not to submit to any funds. We were very lucky to have a producer, already, uh, sorry, an editor already on board, mm -hmm. Rina Hashisho, 
was a classmate of Hussam who started working with him even before he met me. Okay. And she's the one who edited the trailer. So she's a good, uh, mm. she's an excellent editor. <laughs> and uh, we decided to start working on the editing of the sequences that we, we some already shot mm. before submitting to any funds. So we started editing. And then the editing helped us write a dossier, you know, a very clear narrative structure. But we didn't stick to the narrative structure later on because you have to keep the freedom for the, you know, for the, for the editing process, mm -hmm. especially for documentaries, because the writing happens in the editing. Mm -hmm. So we wrote something that was quite uh, well built, let's say, uh, like narratively it was, it worked, mm -hmm. but we changed it later on in the editing. But it was quite important to have this document and to, you know, to have some edited scenes uh, to submit to funds or else no one will, will like will really be encouraged to help us. Yeah. And did you change it, the, the narrative sequence? Did you change it because you found something better or because you couldn't do or you couldn't shoot some of the things that you, were, you, you wanted to do? Actually, it's, it's very like, as Christian said, the writing process, it's, uh, it goes in parallel with the editing. So you keep on changing, I think, part of it because the story evolves. You're working with real characters. The characters evolve. And uh, you, uh, also, you as a filmmaker, you evolve a lot and you gain some kind of maturity. Like for the case of myself and Christian, we were, as I said before, we were growing up with the film, like we're younger. Um, uh, like uh, we had more hair when we, when we started and then we're growing we up. We used to so, party uh, all night long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's uh, it's normal. I mean, like to, to change since you, you keep on changing till you lock the edit. I think it's a very normal process, especially when you're working on a documentary. There's no escape of, of, of changing because everybody uh, around you is changing yourself. You're, you're also changing. The characters are changing and their life is in constant change especially that they move to another city. So a lot of things, uh, you have a massive uh, change happening in their, in their lives. Yeah. We said I just want to yeah. add one small thing. Actually, like the treatment that we wrote uh, initially, like we imagined some scene because we some already shot some scenes. So we knew the characters quite well mm. and it's his cousin. So he knows, he knows them, you know, it's not new characters we're discovering. So we imagined some scenes in the treatment and we were able to shoot all of them but in addition to these scenes, when Yusam arrived to Berlin to shoot with uh, Milad, and he arrived to Sweden to shoot with uh, Jamil, he discovered new things in their lives mm -hmm. he didn't know about, you know, like Milad has a, a kind of a girlfriend, Jamil mm -hmm. was already settling and starting to work, you know, so you always have surprises during the shooting. Yeah. And then later on in the editing, we went with the flow, so we were trying to edit. Mm -hmm. And another thing also to add is that on, on paper, things are much different than on screen. So sometimes you imagine a structure that works on paper and some parallelism and you like, you go from a scene to another and it works well on paper. But when you, when you see it in the editing, you feel that some things are missing or some info are not really clear. So th this is how mm. you have to rewrite and think, you know, like further than the treatment you already wrote. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, I just want to add one more thing yeah. also, like uh, as Christian was saying, like in documentaries, there's, like destiny is your co-director. Co, co, co like you, yeah. you, some, a lot of things happen you couldn't imagine. Or sometimes when you bring the camera in front of people that you think you know, and you, mm -hmm. there's the camera in between, between you and the subject, uh, everything is change, changes and it's, it's a totally different perspective like for bringing the camera in front of uh, your parents or bringing the camera in front of your cousins or people that you know really well. You think that you know them well, but when the camera is there, it's a, it's a barrier between you and the subject. And uh, it's, uh, yeah. you get a lot of unexpected answers, unexpected actions, and you have to, you have to, 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 to deal with it. Mm. Titi. Ta. Ta, ta. Bravo, Karim. Yellow Z. Titi. Ta. 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 Titi. Bravo. Yellow Zor. Titi. Titi. Ta. 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 Titi. Ta. Ma vas ir hekel konšatrin. Gil konšatrin. Anders is jij maar echt gewoon. Het komt zaven. Dag zaven, Anders is jij. Ja, maar goed. Maar, 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 maar,
لك الطريق طب يعني خليني اذا بتريدي لا كثير مضطر روح لا 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 طب صراحه سكرت طبعا عندي حجاره لا بتفركش بعدين بحجاره كبيره <تصفيق> Did you have at any point real divergence in the points of view? Like at some point in the documentary, you said, no, I want to shoot this. I want to do this. I want to do that. Did you have like real divergence or not at all? You mean with the team? Yeah, with the team, with where the story should go or is going. Because yeah, you know, I mean, it, um... it, it's shot in different locations. And, and um, as you said, you know, Destiny is the, the, the co-director and the co-writer co of, of the documentary. So did you have any, any on? Yeah, I think, yeah, it happened to us in some of the scenes, like mainly with the scenes of, uh, of Milo, like uh, one of the protagonists of the film. But I think you should, um, the good thing is that you can't, because this is what's happening. This is reality. Like you can't change it. You can't reverse things. What happened, happened. And sometimes when you get an answer or an action from a, from a character, you can't repeat it. It's yeah. not a fiction. You can't, you can't have another take. Or if you're traveling uh, to Berlin or to Stockholm or to Damascus uh, to, 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 to shoot a scene, you can't repeat it. So I think you should, uh, you should manage like with, the, with what you have and try to, to make the best out of what you have to tell the story you want, to, uh, you want mm -hmm. to tell. I think it's a very normal process to have these kind of, uh, kind of things in documentary. You're not in control on, ev on everything, mm -hmm. uh, what's happening in the shoot. And like regarding with the, with the team with like uh, Christian and Rena, uh, like uh, we had like a, a healthy, a very healthy uh, uh, I can call it a relationship, a very healthy relationship, the three of us and how we discuss the film and uh, what we take a bit uh, some distance. And uh, we also our, had our French co-producer with us, uh, Gabrielle Dumont, who, who she was a bit, she had more distance towards the film. So we, we, we were at, uh, at different uh, steps uh, towards the film that like Christian used always to, 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 to tell us this, that we can't all of us be um, on the same distance of the film. We can't all be very, very close to the film. Someone needs, have, uh, needs to have a distance so we can, we can judge because sometimes when, when you do something and someone tells you like, this is not working or it's not clear or anything and you say, why it's not clear? No, it's, it's very clear. But actually it's not clear because he has, he has, a, he has distance and you're, you're so in the film so you can't judge what, what you've done. So I think it's very healthy the 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 process the that, yeah. that we followed mm -hmm. and uh it, it didn't it didn't come very um it, it uh, we tried stuff it was like from trials and errors we tried stuff and uh, we, we saw what worked and uh, but the whole team like we're very in a very we used to make very healthy conversations mm -hmm. about film to have opinions then take some distance then go back to the editing suite so i think time helped us a lot and having this mm -hmm. distance helped us a lot to to overcome many challenges while working on the film. Mm. Yeah, and I think in documentaries, uh, since you cannot control everything and you have to follow the reality and what's happening, the only important thing is to have like to have a common story that like the whole team wanna tell. Mm. If you have a divergence in the story you wanna tell, this is a problem. But if you all agree on this, the final story you wanna tell, by the story, I mean the idea that you wanna convey, plus you agree on the cinematic approach, then it will work. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something we discussed a lot with Wissam actually concerning the cinematic language because before, like the first part of the shooting, he did it on his own and he was shooting himself as a DOP. And then later on for the second part, when we wrote the treatment and we knew that he's going to travel to Berlin and to Stockholm and to film his cousins again, we hired a DOP, Fadi Samra, who, uh, who had to work with Wissam. And this is when, where I, I, I told Wissam, like, be very careful 
because like the spectator shouldn't be able to like later on he shouldn't notice that in mm-hmm. the first part you were shooting and in the second part like we we arrive to a set to another film completely different mm-hmm. because the, the, the op is shooting so we should feel that even though Fadi is shooting, you are the one shooting. Yeah. So like, yeah. make sure not to have a very clean shots, make sure to have like something very similar to the language you already used in the first part. And mm. I think when you like, when you agree on these general, you know, like general themes, mm. uh, whether of the narration or the cinematic language, then the rest, it, it, it will work in a way or another. Yeah, it's really super important as you were saying to have like this, this homogeneous uh, idea and continuity in the movie. Uh, honestly, guys, real honestly, did you shoot? Did you ha- did you did you shoot any of the scenes twice? No, no, honestly, no, we didn't. We have many sh- many scenes that we didn't use, but we didn't okay. shoot some scenes twice because there's no point. And uh, like want- for me, that it's not the yeah. answer that I wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> the truth. We're only telling the truth, but. Uh, okay. But uh, to tell you the truth, like we had a lot of scenes that uh, I wanted to, to use, but we ended up not using using them because after all, you want to um, all the all this all the scenes should serve the storytelling, should serve yeah. the characters and the arc of the characters and the story. So there are a lot of scenes that we ended up not using, and mm-hmm. some scenes that we weren't expecting to use, and they were our main scenes. Like for me, it was very challenging when I was uh, because I was filming alone. For example, in Beirut and in Damascus for the first part, and I had the camera a DSLR with the uh, with the lens, with the big lens, and I had the um, uh, a zoom recorder on the on the, with an extension on the camera. It was already very heavy, and it was that, and it was shaking. Uh, the camera was shaking and jittery all the time. So when uh, when I went back to the editing, I felt that uh, the image is so chaotic, and it's so uh, in some in some ways it's uh, it's not it's not um, it's a bit like uh, in some ways it's trashy like mm. it's very uh, it's not clean this is like the right word but after all i made peace with these shots and i like uh, also after uh, uh, as christian after they saw them uh, christian at my editor and they said uh, no we like them because there's there's the sense of intimacy the camera mm. we feel the person who's behind the camera it's not a perfect uh, uh, perfect frame or something very aesthetic. This chaos of diff of 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 the of the many textures of images because some of the images were shot by the characters. I couldn't be with them all the time. So this is mix of chaos of images and textures made. I think uh, enhanced the. Uh, it gave like um, something. Um, a certain kind of sensibility to, uh, mm. in the film that was really translated for the viewers. Like mm. now, when we see yeah. the film, first thing they talk about like this, these different textures, and uh, no one talks about why the camera is shaky that much or why it's jittery yeah. because they feel that they um, they feel the the why why it's that jittery or why it's that shaky because the story is intimate and uh, this is the filmmaker's story. Mm. So. Yeah. So yeah, this is the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I, I agree. I have not. Yeah, I watched the movie, and I, like, you really are sucked up in the, in the story and the content, and and it's beautiful. Hi, Milo. Hi. كيف؟ نه خبرني عن ماك أنت. ما بطلع كتير. طب ليش ما رحت انت وجميل على نفس البلد؟ انا حابب اروح استقل لحالي، ابني حياتي هيك صفر جديدة، ما يكون في حدا حوالي يعني بدي اعيش ابني يصير كل حالي عرفت شلون؟ يعني من الاخر كان بدي يكون حر. ماني زعلان يعني عرفان هذا الشيء من قبل ما اطلع، عرفان انا رح اطلع رح اتوحد من هيك لحالي لانه ما رح اعرف حدا. هي بس فتره يعني بكره بدها تفوت جامعه وهيك بظن الحل مش الوقت. يعني ما يعني شو استسلم؟ قل لي شو اعمل؟ شو الحل؟ إذا في حال مثلا أخي أنا بدي خلص ما عم بدي أعيش عرفت كيف؟ في انتحر أو شيء في أهلي بالموضوع أنا ماني لحالي 
نمتت ولا عشت ولا انه عزفت ولا ما عزفت فشلت ولا ما فشلت ده بس مثل طيزي عرفت كيف؟ ليه بدك تنتحر اصلا موجودين اهلك او مش موجودين ليه بدك تنتحر؟ لك ما ما راح انتحر انا يعني بس عم بشرح لك المعنى لا يعني فيها تكون ما... خطرت على بالك شي مره يعني عادي يمكن تخطر على بالك ايه والله خطرت؟ والله خطرت شي ثلاث ثلاث مرات امتى؟ I'm going to talk about the archive scenes. Uh, the archive scenes, are they real or did you, did you shoot them? No, no, of course they are real. How to shoot like two kids back when they were five years old. <laughs> this is hilarious. This is, you have, the, the, th the scenes are real. Wow. This is, yeah. I've watched the movie. I was like, it's like your, I think it's your uncle who did the movie, who, who shoot them, right? It's yeah, like yeah. he knew that years later you're gonna do this documentary, and like the 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 shots they fit, they fit like, and it's it's just hilarious. How how did you do that? Did you have a lot of yeah. shots, a lot of archives, or how did it happen? Yeah, we had uh, like hours and hours of uh, of archive that I was uh, like to tell you a little secret that uh, <laughs> I was hiding these shots. Uh, on uh, on Christian and Rina because there were already a lot of uh, <laughs> images, a lot of textures, if you want, in the film. As I said before, I have the shots that I shot myself, the shots that my DP shot, and uh, uh, our our I, I I used to record our Skype calls. I had the voice notes from WhatsApp. Uh, they 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 shot themselves. I had some archive of them, and uh, for example, Milo and in his concerts and stuff. So I had a lot of uh, different kind of images that I found very challenging to treat and put them all together mm -hmm. and to create a certain kind of harmony to serve the story, to serve the storytelling. Uh, so uh, I had these images, I knew about them, but at, I, I, I was really shy to share these images with, uh, with Christian Andrena because like, uh, uh, it's a lot of images. I was really young. You have one of your par parents yelling, let's say mm -hmm. your uncle, I don't know, uh, what is he doing? Uh, one of your cousins is stopless. You have a lot. It's it's uh, it's like real uh, archive when you were when you were a kid since we were three years old. My uncle like had this VHS camera and he used to uh, follow us everywhere. Uh, everywhere we go, like even in very uh, intimate places that we don't want to share, he used to follow us and, and film us. So we were used to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. So uh, like, I, 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 I uh, we were at, at a certain point, we were blocked in the editing, like, uh, like we didn't know what to do. We, we arrived to a stage where a bit, uh, there were many challenges to, to do, like every film, like you, you, you arrive to a certain, and a documentary, it takes a lot of editing. So I showed them the images and they were like, uh, why, why, why did you hide all these images? They're perfect. This is exactly what we need. And this is going to serve the story. And we need to add these images. So I, I gave the images to, to Rina and she, she watched them all. And, uh, and we started working on them. And it was very challenging to use them because we didn't want to use them as... Um, as a flashback, we wanted to, to use them as a continuity to tell something new, to tell, uh, to support the story, not to, not to put the scenes as a flashback. Like one of the characters remembered something, and we go back to this. Uh, so it was very delicate to how to use them, but it didn't. We didn't succeed from the first cut. We made like, uh, like I don't know, dozens of cuts to to so 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 we locked the edit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's really like for the people who have watched the documentary and for the people who, who haven't watched it yet, it's it looks like a, a fiction movie. It looks like like the shots really they fall into the place and it's 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 amazing. Christian? Yeah, Gotcha. I just want to say that you had the chance to work with uh, three great editors actually. Yeah. 
because for, for this kind of film, it was quite hard to like to finish it with only one editor. Mm. Like Rina started from the very beginning and she was there on, until the end. And then we had Mathilde Miar, a French editor who came also for the last three weeks of the editing. And uh, also Nadia Ben Rashid, who did a, a, like a very, very interesting uh, consul consultancy with us. Yeah. In Marrakesh, we were part of Atelier de Atlas with the project, uh, the Marrakesh Film Festival, and Nadia was also a consultant. And instead of doing a three hours consultancy, we spent, I think, with uh, Nadia 16 hours because she insisted on like on going frame by frame on the editing and give us ideas <laughs> for the structure. So it was really, really nice to work with these three editors. And I think without them, like, you know, like this um, uh, th this thing of, ha of having a very fluid film and a, flu a very fluid narration, despite the fact that you're working on many kind of materials, wasn't obvious obvious at all, at all, at all. And you can mm -hmm. like, because okay, like in previous cuts, we used to feel every cut and to feel every, you know, like every cut in the structure and the story. And now, as you said, like it's, it became super fluid. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Christian, a word about the documentary uh, word in, in Lebanon. And ju just be honest, okay? Just, um, you know, it's... Because I don't see a lot of docu feature documentaries uh, that, I don't know, maybe correct me if I'm wrong. I don't see a lot of feature document, Lebanese feature documentaries going into international film festivals. This documentary, I think, I, I think is one of the rare between brackets feature documentaries that that made it through and made it to the beyond the official selections in the international film festivals. So, first of all, my question is, what do you think about the scene, the the, the documentary Lebanese scene, and then second, why do you think this documentary made it through all these international film festivals? Yeah, uh, actually, I think that there are there are many documentaries uh, that are being produced every year, mm. and I personally think that like documentary pr production is a bit easier than fiction because the budgets are smaller, mm. and because of the limitations on the funding in the Arab world, it's quite hard to fund a fiction, but it's a bit easier and more realistic to fund a documentary. Mm -hmm. So many people are being able like to shoot docu like small budget documentaries or even you know finance. Uh, documentaries through funds or like co-productions with TVs and uh, such things. Uh, and you have some great documentaries that are being produced, but I think they are not uh, like uh, getting the chance uh, mm -hmm. to get sales agents and distributors and to get, you know, to the festival programmers. And this is a thing that like, you know, documentary filmmakers are, are missing because like most of them, they produce themselves their documentaries or there is like some very small uh, companies or independent producers are working on them, which makes it harder, like to get the like to to have all the connections to the festivals. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I think that uh, you know because you when you produce and shoot and direct and sometimes you know edit the, your documentary yourself. As we some said, you lose this uh, distance that you need to give it an international dimension or you lose, you know, these chances to meet people and talk about the film and like make the festivals hear about it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you lose the patience and you submit it, you know, like you submit it to, like, to a festival. And once you get a yes, you go ahead without like thinking of a strategy. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's important to have a team, you know, uh, like it's important to like not to be alone and making a film, to have a producer, to have a team of like a, a, a production company because like my colleagues at Obboot, helped a lot with their distance for the film. They saw a lot of cuts and gave feedback. And then later on when submitting to festivals, we like, we were asking them all the time if this is the right festival for the film or not. Mm -hmm. If we should talk to a special person that we know that can help with the festival, you know, like all this stuff, like having the connections and having a team around the film is really important. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be honest, like lately I watched, uh, like some great Lebanese films that didn't get the chance to go to like to very big festivals, or maybe some of them, they did a, a, a huge premiere at Panorama at Berlinale, you know, or like such places, but then later on they disappeared because like the filmmakers don't have the time to submit to a lot of festivals because it's a very time consuming uh, task. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they get a premiere and then later on, they don't follow up on a lot of festivals. 
And we had the chance to have a, you know, a sales agent on board, uh, like our French co-producer has also a sales agency, mm. uh, a section in the, in the same company. So they took care of submitting the film to a lot of festivals. And this is why we got, you know, a lot of acceptances. Mm. We also got a lot of reje- re- rejections. Yeah. It's, important this is something... it. yeah, it's important to say it because people, most of, the, most of the people I know, they, 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 they get discouraged when they get no, no, no. But... You know, so for the production, this is what I tell them all the time. For the production, you only need one yes. This is it. Exactly. And for the film festivals, um, it's the same thing. You, you you don't need to get into 2,000 film festivals. You know, you just need to get, as you said, to the right film festivals. Yeah, to be honest, during the production, we got like a, a ton of rejection emails and we got four or five yes. Mm. And these four or five years gave us the means and the courage, you know, and the, you, and the, the, and the, the power to finish the film. And for the festivals, like we we're checking the list of festivals that the film was submitted to or where he got, like it got accepted with Wissam last week. Mm. And the list is huge. Mm. And, you know, but you, you, we got accepted to 25 festivals, but like the 25 festivals gave the film the chance to be seen by uh, the right audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gave us the chance to be in many territories and many countries. It gave us the chance to be online because of the COVID that also yeah. got like, we got some on-site festivals and we were lucky, you know, to have both like a mix of uh, on-site festivals and online festivals because online gives the opportunity to more people to see the film, but the on-site gives the like, it gives the film another, uh, um, uh, another yeah, because we're in a cinema theater, it's on okay. big screen. Like we got the chance to be present on, the, on these screenings and we felt, you know, mm-hmm. the emotion that every spectator was giving. We were lucky to be in Cairo and like receive the prices ourselves. Mm-hmm. So yeah, as you said, like we got 25 festivals out of, uh, I don't know, 100. But it was a nice list of festivals and it gave the career of the film a certain, you know, a certain push. Yeah. yeah. So, with that, it was a very, it was a very tough year, actually. Like, uh, yeah, we're, we're thankful and grateful that we're making it through. But it was, it's very, it's a very tough year for, for the industry and for the independent cinema and for distribution also. So it's very, it's very right. challenging. Uh, so uh, yeah, like I think for every yes you have, I don't know, a twenty no in terms of funds or in terms of festival. I think like f- a filmmaker should have a very uh, thick skin. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I if it, if it's the right expression, but like yeah. I was I was uh, I was lucky just to, like to be to to be to be surrounded with a good team with a very supportive team that they were always for every no they used to like they used that to encourage me that a no doesn't make or or break the film because you really get uh, sometimes it's a as i always call it's like a roller coaster yeah. making this film with with every no you get very discouraged like and you ask yourself who's gonna watch this film maybe mm-hmm. this film is not good maybe it's not gonna it's not uh, universal enough so you get all this uh, self-doubt and it's very important that the the team that you're working with encourage encourages you and uh, and that you understand that a no or 10 no's or 20 no's doesn't make uh, doesn't make or break a film
it's funny. Yesterday I was watching a video and they said that a no is a step closer to a yes. It's just one step closer. To it. You know what's really silly when you get a shortlist email when you're shortlisted for a very big, uh, very big fund or a very big festival, and you, you they say yeah, that we are shortlisted. We were we were shortlisted for a very uh, very big festival, and we we're like ah. And then when we got the no, it was very so. That's the silliest. Mm -hmm. When you get the no, at least you know it's a no. But when yeah. you get shortlisted, <laughs> then it's a no. That's terrible. <laughs> Did you sleep between the shortlist <laughs> announcement and the, the the final announcement? Did you guys sleep, or you were all excited just to know the the results no actually like they they send you an email that you're shortlisted or you get an email from uh, the from the sales company that uh, mm -hmm. you ask them for you follow up on a specific festival and they say, they tell you uh, like where you're where the, they like the film we're shortlisted and you're like uh, and you're like very nervous like you start mm -hmm. uh, you start packing to go to the festival <laughs> and then after a week uh, you have a no but uh, like we, we had a lot of feedback from festival i think this is also important what you have uh, we had many feedback that they like the film, but uh, they couldn't uh, host it this year because they they are selecting less films because this year was very 2020 was very except exceptional year and we had the premiere uh, in January 2020. So and then after January in March, uh, the whole world was in lockdown and mm. uh, yeah. so uh, so yeah, very challenging year. Yeah. What was and um, I want to ask this question. What was the the most positive comment you've had on the movie and what was i wouldn't say the worst comment but the comment that you appreciated the less um i think there's no not a specific comment but i'm i i um, i get really like satisfied and i'm really happy when random people that we don't know from like a country that i even never visited mm. they send us a message on facebook or on instagram and they uh, they just share their emotions and they say uh, they don't even speak the language of the film they don't know me they don't know the characters and like just random viewers and just like they share their emotions and their feedback and just they tell you at the end of the day thank you for for mm. this film and like you think that you connected with these people yeah. so i think this is what i like the most like this connection that you make with the with the people when 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 they uh, when they watch when they watch the film because i think this is the purpose of every storyteller or every filmmaker just to connect with his audience and that mm. the film finds its uh, its audience um uh, i don't remember any worst uh, worst worst comment like my um no one was really like uh, very silly or very tough with us. Like okay. uh, we know, like we can read between the lines if someone mm. doesn't like the film or not very fond of the film, we can feel it, we can sense it. Mm. But we didn't have like rude comments or okay. like we had some challenging, uh, some uh, some some intriguing uh, comments in, in the Q and A's and film festivals that mm. we debated about uh, in the in the film. Like one of them was is if the film is political or why didn't you talk about the politics in the film and how these characters feel about the politics in Syria. This mm. was one of the questions that we've been asked about uh, about the film, but we made a, a debate and uh, like we, we talked, we discussed, we shared, and this is the, the purpose of the Q and A's. <laughs> من كل قلبي يعني انه اختي واخي وانه رفيقتي يعني هدول يعني بس انه قلت لها ليش ما عملتي بابا وماما معهم يعني انه هي عملتهم هدول ذكرى منا فكثير حبيتهم يعني بيرافقوني كل الطريق بضلوا معي هدول عن جد يعني هي اكثر شيء حلو اخذوا معك حسك بهالشنطه يعني Is it on purpose that you cut off all the political uh, aspect of the movie, of the crisis? It wasn't. Uh, actually very tackled in the film because like once you go out uh, of of the country this is a political statement once you say that you want mm. to cross illegally uh, uh, this is a political statement we don't need to discuss like politics because 
uh, in the film because that wasn't what I wanted to tell. Like yeah. I wanted to follow uh, these two characters in, uh, in, in transition. And this is like what, uh, what I like uh, as a filmmaker. I like to follow characters in a transitional phase of their lives. And this is what, what I was, what I was thinking. I was, I was following my, my instinct, my feeling, mm. because in a lot of times I wasn't very, I didn't have the distance while I was with my cousins on, 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 on what to do. So I just followed what I feel that I have to do. And this is what, what I did. And mm. I didn't feel that I wanted to ask them about politics because the film is not to say what the film is not about that. It's about these mm. two young men. Uh, so I, I didn't want to mm. to tackle subject that uh, that won't be useful for the storytelling of the that won't serve the storytelling of the film. Yeah, did you uh, did they accept immediately to get shot, or it took some time to convince them? Uh, it wasn't like a question of a yes or a no from the first day. It was like we started. Of course, I had their consent. Mm. They knew that I was filming. It wasn't like a hidden camera, or I didn't tell them that I'm shooting. But they didn't know the purpose of the. Okay. of the of the shoot because they they were a bit lost because at first when i shot uh, the first scenes they were four characters not two okay so they were a bit lost like what happened to mm -hmm. the other it's not only us there are also two other characters but then as soon as i started like uh, we started working on the film uh, like intensely we we dismissed the two characters that like, i was just trying i think because you shoot a lot of things that you don't end up using yeah so um it was it wasn't hard when they were it wasn't easy sorry when they when they watched the film like after after five years we sent them uh, links and we were very uh, christian and i were very nervous about their feedback because you know a lot of things change in their lives and sometimes when you say a sentence when you're 27 when you watch yeah. it when you're 29 and when you're 30 you say why did i say that also for example you're in a relationship in a relationship with someone and you break mm -hmm. up with this person and after two years you say, I don't want this person to be in the film. And then mm. I shot it. I built my story on it so I can't remove it. Yeah. So it, it, it was very challenging because you're, you're, you're following real characters and uh, they were in a very vulnerable phase in their lives. So it wasn't easy, but they, they, they accepted it at the end. And I think as Milad, uh, one of the characters of the film, said uh, last time in a, in a panel discussion that... Uh, he learned how to make peace with the film because he traveled with us to Rotterdam at the uh, world premiere of the film. And he had everybody was asking, uh, asking him uh, questions, him and Jamil. And I think it took them some time to be comfortable with the film, even to share good news about the film, because it's a film about themselves. And it's not very easy to see yourself for five years in a phase that you're trying to erase. This is what Milad uh, always says, that he's, he was trying to erase this phase of their life. Then comes a film that archived everything uh, that happened to him. Mm. So it took, it took them some time to make peace with the film, but they finally like made it. They're very happy about it, uh, like both of them, that, uh, yeah. that the film was made. Between brackets, I know it's it's important that you're talking about this because I know some documentary filmmakers who did their documentaries, and, but afterwards the characters, they just told them we're not uh, we cannot do this we cannot do this anymore and and this this game this game after the editing just right before the the documentary was about to to, to launch and to start screening everywhere and the filmmakers they didn't have the choice because. Because you know it's 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 you're filming someone. You're not. It's not fiction. So I think it's. Important. I won't lie to you. Like we had we had similar uh, we had similar uh, situations, but uh, mm. they were solved. Like we were nervous in many in many situations because I think that's normal. Like uh, when you're shooting a person not in a good phase of his life in a very vulnerable phase, so it's normal just to have these kind of actions. But they were um, they were solved. I think it's. It's how how you approach the character, how you approach the person, how mm -hmm. you sell him the idea, and yeah. uh, and uh, like uh, sometimes I used to get really like uh, nervous or angry if one of them did, don't want to film today or they're feeling not mm -hmm. okay to film, and I was there and I had my ticket, I needed uh, my return ticket, I needed to go back to Beirut, and but I used to have these discussions with the Christian, and he always used uh, like to tell me that don't forget these are your cousins. They're not always they're not mm -hmm. only your characters, and this is very important that I learned while making the film. It's because, funny that uh, the producer is telling you this. Normally, the produ producer <laughs> tells you the opposite. They're like, go, go no, no, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, to tell you the truth, I'm really like uh, I, 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 I was, I'm really like happy that I have worked with uh, with Christian and Rina. We're very, uh, very harmonious uh, team, mm -hmm. and we worked together for the. We weren't like pressured by the time, or we we knew that we're not making a box office film. Mm -hmm. We knew we wanted to make the film because uh, for the passion of it, because we wanted to tell mm -hmm. the story of these two guys, because we we relate to the to their stories. Yeah. And they, these uh, two young men, they are two young men that you can meet uh, in the supermarket. They can be your neighbor. They can be your uh, your uh, the cashier at the supermarket. They can be anyone. So they look like us. We relate to these characters. This is why we wanted to tell uh, yeah. their story. So that was our essence uh, all yeah. the time. This, that was the, the, the fire that is pushing us forward. Yeah. Do you think that this film influenced their life in a way or in another? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm. Uh, like Milad as a as a trumpeter, he made his, he made his uh, debut album, and every like almost uh, one out of three people who watched the film, first thing they said, "What's the name of this track at minute twenty two or something like this?" And then they go <laughs> to the like, they, they uh, even like people are buying his album, they follow him, mm. and uh, I should and, give uh, you some of his gross net. <laughs> 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 no, we, we owe him a lot so we yeah. cannot open a lot of discussions <laughs> no actually there is also a funny thing that happened with art when we were in um, Cairo for the film festival and we yeah, saw yeah. and I were heading to an interview and then we arrived to the place where the interview is, is taking place and there, there was this um, uh, cafe or restaurant mm. and they were putting uh, like uh, some music and it was one of the musics of Milad Wow. And this was yeah, really, yeah, 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 this was, yeah, I think they found it on the like, video you know, on the Angami or something. Yeah. And they, were, they put the whole album on loop. <laughs> they were looping the album and people were like, uh, you know, eating and just listening to the music. And I sent him a video. And I think this is very rewarding uh, like to him as a musician because he's also an artist. And uh, for Jamil also, like, um, like he's very excited because he wasn't expecting to, to he wasn't expecting to, um the, the 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 impact that the film um, uh, is making so yeah. he's uh, he says like for your next film i want to find you investors i want you to make and he's like uh, <laughs> he's acting like my manager saying i want to to find investors you need to make another film and he's happy because wow. i think uh, jamil is a very family person and he's happy that uh, you know we archived part of our history of our family because we mm -hmm. come from a family of carpenters and uh, mm -hmm. we know that this place at a certain point when Syria is going to be rebuilt, like what happened in Beirut, maybe this place is going to vanish. It's not going to be there anymore. Mm -hmm. So they're happy that the place is archived because this is what I did in the film. There's this sense of transmission of the camera from my uncle because he used to film before. And then now I took the camera and now I'm, I'm, I'm the one who's filming. So they're really, he's really happy and proud that, uh, that we're telling the story of our family. Mm. Okay. Christian, what was for you the most difficulty or difficulties uh, to, produ to produce this movie? Like, first of all, like the most obvious thing is uh, the financing part. Mm. It was really hard, you know, to convince funders uh, because like the film came, came a bit late uh, during the Syrian crisis and the refugee crisis. So like some people were saying to us, like many film were done, but we were trying to explain that this film is different because it's a very personal, intimate mm -hmm. story. The point of view is completely different because like the director is following his cousins. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, we want to give a face to these refugees. We want to give a story to these refugees. We want to be really far from the, the number thing or like, you know, like the stereotypes of uh, refugee stories. But when you talk to funders, it was like a, a bit hard to convince them. Plus, when you submit for like post-production funds, for example, you submit with a cut that's not final. Mm. And most of the time, like funders only see the weaknesses mm. and it's a bit hard for them to see like where the film is heading to. So that, that was a, a bit hard like to convince people to come on board. But luckily we were able to find some money like to make it happen. It was a very small budget movie, mm -hmm. but we made, we made it happen. And this is the most important thing for us. The second thing, like it's something that we some mentioned, it's super hard to make a film about like a family member. And it was really like, and for, like, for me, usually in life, like the human side comes before anything else. Mm -hmm. And would we sound like it was really something we, we focused on because we 
like before having protagonists, like it's the cousins of Wissam, it was super important for him and for them to keep this confidence relationship, even though he's filming, like some things they don't want to say in front of the camera, some things should be sold behind the camera or even without filming, you know, like he knew them since he was born. So it's not some someone you're meeting and you can put everything in front of the camera. So th this thing of saying, now we're going to film, now we're not going to film. This is how we're going to solve this problem. This is how we're going to make the, the like, uh, Jamil or Milad feel, feel confident or safe. Hmm. You know, this part was really, really hard, especially that I like, you know, we don't know them. We feel that, you know, like, especially me, I have never met them before the premiere in uh, Rotterdam. Like, hmm. I felt I know a lot about them because I have seen a million cuts of the film, but I haven't met them in person. So, so, so this thing also, like, neither me or, or Rina, we don't know them and you're working on a film about that. So, you know, it's it's always hard to say, you now you can like, you can ask this question or not. You can go to this place of the past or, you know, or not. Yeah. So it's, this side also was super hard. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that's always present in cinema, whether it's fiction or uh, documentary, mm -hmm. because as you said, we're dealing with human beings. We're not dealing with objects and we mm -hmm. don't want to deal with objects. If you want to deal with objects, you can mm -hmm. be a designer or, you know, you can choose a different job. But if you want, if if you want to do cinema, mm -hmm. it's all about a human relationship, whether with the team or the people in front of the camera. So yeah, it's a, the, the, this thing also of dealing with people mm -hmm. and like how to make the film happen without hurting anyone is also yeah. a huge. Yeah. Sam, did you want to say anything? No, no, I, uh, I was just agreeing with what, okay. uh, what, yeah. what Chris is saying. Yeah, cool. Um, Question for, for both of you as a filmmaker and as the producer. Uh, do you think that, what do you think about the ending of this documentary? Do you think that this story has ended? Do you think that you chose the right ending? What do you feel about like the last part of, of the movie? Uh, like for me, that for us, that was the most challenging, uh, what more, one of the most challenging tasks in the film because you can film for like, uh, 20 years you're filming human beings everybody every day something's happening uh, the, we had a lot of uh, uh, additional scenes that we didn't use so like you can use i can use till they, they 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 become 40 years old but i think it's important when to learn when to stop when mm -hmm. when when the story you feel that the story is complete that's when you you say that uh, okay i can stop this is what i told you before we, we weren't pressured with time we wanted to make a film that we that we like ourselves that we can defend so when we felt that the the ending um uh is complete the story is complete we can uh, we can give birth to this film we can share this film with the audience this is when when i stopped filming and when we when we worked uh, on the ending it was very it, it was very it, it was hard mm. just to 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 make like this closure of the film. I, I don't think it's important if the story ended or not for me like as a filmmaker i don't uh, i don't find it uh, like necessary to end the story or um, because like um, how to how how the story of these two human beings can end like we worked on their arc and we felt that the arc we had uh, we had the, uh, the transition is, is there so this is when we try to 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 end it because like even today, if you ask Milo, do you want to stay in Berlin? He would say, no, maybe I want to go uh, elsewhere. Or Jamil, he would tell you, I want to move to another city. So how to end the story of, mm. of people who are who are always on the move or, or if they have this idea in their head. So okay. uh, it's never an ending. Okay. Yeah, and the ending evolved actually with time because we had diff a different ending in the previous cuts. Mm. And then this concert took place. And we had the chance to film it, and it was the the reunion of the three, you know, the the presence of Hissam as a filmmaker, and then uh, Milad as a musician, and uh, and Jamil as part of the spectators. So we we felt that yeah, this could be a night, you know, this reunion, and this kind of uh, success, you know, like because it was very important for us also to tell a success story because like everything we hear about refugees is like very sad stories, and this like it's a it's very hard to be a refugee. It's very hard to live immigration, you know, and to travel and to change mm -hmm. your city and your life. 
But the, at the end of the day, everything is possible and you can get to a success ending. And this is what, what we wanted to, to tell through this film. And this is what happened in real life to Milad and Jamil. We didn't, you know, we didn't manipulate reality. Mm-hmm. So they mm-hmm. left and it was super hard to leave. And then they had some hard moments mm-hmm. and they had, uh, they had some ups some downs. But at the end of the day, we should not forget the ups. And I really like the sentence because we some used it in an interview a few days ago, so I'm stealing it. It's really important to show this, you know, because like usually in like in documentaries about refugees, we like to like to focus on the downs and say that how hard it is to live this kind of situation. We didn't want to do this at all. And you know, since the beginning, we some told me I want to do a success story. Mm-hmm. And this is what we tried to do. And I think that the documentary conveys in a way. Like you can feel the downs, but you can also feel the ups. And uh, this was also a huge challenge, you know, like to make the scenes emotional, but at the same time, not cheesy. To yeah. make a film about refugees, but to like to be very far from any kind of stereotyping. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, because all the feedbacks, feedbacks we're getting from the spectators are in this direction. Mm-hmm. So we're very, very happy that we succeeded to get to like to what we wanted to, uh, to tell through this film. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to add yeah. something like um, the, 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 the film, like uh, what the ending is a, is a story of hope and, uh, mm-hmm. and joie de vivre. Like, this is the nature of, uh, of, of, of us human beings. Like there are a lot of uh, downs, but also there are ups. And um, uh, the magical things that like us human beings, we do is we adapt. But when you adapt, something dies uh, in you. Uh, like it's like a small death and something else. Is, is born in you so this is the question and this is like uh, what 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 kind of person you become after this trans- transition after this small death because also when you go from a place to another it's like a small death you die in a place and you're born in another place so uh, that was something that also we tried to to convey and in, in the film yeah uh, out of curiosity did your did your character at some point in the movie told you that we're not interested anymore in continuing or not at all because we see there is a scene when you bring you bring them you bring him back his instrument and then he he just it breaks in tears um was there any moment and then there is a scene where he is in the kitchen and then you you i think the DOP was filming, but as if you're filming. Uh, and then you told him, are you upset? Are you upset? I stopped. And then you didn't stop. Do you think, was there any moment where they told you, we think that we cannot do it anymore? It's hard for us or no? Like, uh, there are some days that they, uh, like one of them told me that I don't want to film today. I'm not feeling okay. Stop following me. And this is what we did. We stopped. We respected okay. the respected what they wanted because as Christian said like ethics they come first and we're shooting with the human beings and these two characters are not only characters they are they are my family they are my the two kids I uh, I used to play with when I when I was uh, was a kid yeah. so when they said that we stopped and when the camera sometimes when they say like uh, stop filming me uh, yeah. the camera stops it's not like he says filming me and uh, we come closer or we follow him mm-hmm. if he goes out of the frame we don't follow him out of the frame mm-hmm. he's out of the frame we move to another scene yes. uh, we didn't I, I i was trying not to be like um, uh, to, to be pushy even with my camera and even with the storytelling just to push the character to to give like it uh, to to intrigue cheesy emotions or cheesy mm-hmm. tears or so it's not a reality show then. yeah 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 exactly yeah like fight now go ahead <laughs> yeah actually you can because you're not uh, like you're you're working with adults you're, it's not like you're gonna give it say tell them i'll give you uh, i'll give you candy if you shoot the scene mm-hmm. it's, it's or, or you're gonna win a prize it's not a reality show as you said so it, you can't as much as you say you want to control things it shows on the camera uh, the transparency of the characters and the transparency of the story i think it's uh, it's very obvious and it's very clear to a spectator when he watches something if he connects with it or or not. So yeah. uh, so why go there? Yeah. Uh, would you change anything? So as a filmmaker and as a producer, would you now that after the film ha- has been released, would you would you look at it and say, okay, I would have changed this? Christian, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this means this is a yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, actually, um, I wanted to change something and we did it just before locking the edit because like, you know, 
we we first kind of logged the edit and then we went to some um, like we showed the film to some people and we got some uh, some feedback mm. and we some wasn't present in the in the screening mm. so uh, I came to some and I told them listen like we got some feedback and I don't know how to translate it concretely. So some people felt that, like, you know, like I told them what the people felt. And then I told them we're going to have a screening at Abut with the whole team and we're going to see if we feel that something should be changed. If not, we can disregard, you know, the feedbacks. Mm -hmm. Because when, when you say to people we're a work in progress, like you always get feedback, even though the film is, works perfectly. Yeah. So I told them we're going to see the film. And if we feel that nothing should be changed, then we can go ahead with the lock. If we feel that something should be changed, then we do it and خلاص, we lock, you know, mm -hmm. because we're going to start telling people this is the final film. You either mm -hmm. like it or, you know, like at a certain point as a producer or as a filmmaker, yeah. you should say it's it's the end, you know, mm -hmm. or else you're going to change every day. Yeah. So uh, we saw the film and we felt that it's, it's like the second part of the film when they get to Europe was a bit long. Mm -hmm. So then I saw with Sam and we sat together on like on the editing uh, software mm -hmm. and I told them we need to cut 10 minutes. I don't know from where, I don't know. We need to cut 10 minutes and we did it like in half an hour mm -hmm. because we knew where like the places where like, we could cut and mm -hmm. without affecting the whole story. And this is how we, we like we made it happen. And no, 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 now like uh, we saw the film many times in festivals, like uh, we saw it in uh, Rotterdam with the audience. We saw it again in Cairo and we saw it in Montp Montpellier, like the three festivals that took place physically and were present. And like every time we see the film, like personally, I don't feel that I would like to change anything. Like I really, there is one error in the credits that I would like to change, but <laughs> <laughs> would you like, like to change the, I really the, like, the credit like, or the, I, I think you weren't three days um, satisfied with this person. You did it on purpose, right? <laughs> No, it's uh, not a name, it's not a name. <laughs> it's a, no, it's date, not a name, it's, same, it's, it's a date, something. yeah. yeah. <laughs> same here, I would, I would have changed the date. Uh, also, like, I made, a, I made a, a trip about it, like, it's, if it's, uh, uh, would, it be, um, would it be a problem? Uh, this date, we, maybe we need to change it. How we already made our uh, DCP and everything, so we couldn't change it, but it's something very lame. It's something, it's a, it's a detail in the credits. But for me, like also, like uh, it's, um, it's. I'm a gonna go that... back and watch it and find it. You won't notice it. You won't notice it. Like for me, I wouldn't. I. I. It's a. It's a. It's a film that I learned a lot from, and that I. Uh, that I look at after. Uh, almost a, a year and a half of the premiere and I'm I'm happy about it. I'm happy that I made this film and uh, I, I wouldn't change anything because everything that I did, uh, like it was a, a person, it was a very learning lesson for me as a human being and as, as a filmmaker. Mm. Like we made, uh, I made some errors, then then I tried other stuff and I succeeded in stuff. And I uh, I think it's it's a, it's a normal process of filmmaking, filmmaking. You learn from your own mistake. You learn from making films. Exactly. I wouldn't change uh, anything other than um, other than the date and maybe like, um, and the, because when I, when the film was premiered, uh, Lebanon was in a different uh, state. And uh, I say in one of the voiceover that I wouldn't uh, kind of I would uh, rec I would think a lot before leaving my country. But now that with all what's going on, I think uh, the mm. answer is very clear. So <laughs> maybe if I was doing again the film now with the, with what's happening in Lebanon, it could have it could have uh, been. Um, there could have been a different a difference a, a minor change but other than that um, okay i'm okay good, with it good 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 yeah. it's interesting yeah it's interesting what you said because most of the students when we i think we, we all see students uh, filmmaking students and they want to they want to do the perfect movie we we can't we we learn we just learn and learn and by making movie this is how we learn and it's funny because what you see, I see it differently. So it's okay to, to, to I learn yeah, differently okay. from you. And this is what, what, what I say all the time. There isn't one rule of doing things. We do yeah. things differently. And this is what is beautiful about uh, filmmaking. Yeah, so, I think in cinema also you should learn to lose control a bit yeah. and like go with the flow because sometimes, uh, like we some said, fate can give you beautiful things. Mm. And this is something I like. I actually learned with, with some experienced filmmaker that I worked with because you know, like first time filmmakers like students 
We all want to do the perfect film and control every detail on set, you know, in fiction or in documentary. But when you gain some experience in cinema, I think with time you learn that like losing control can get you to a very to very nice things. Mm -hmm. And we sound like you know, I think that he was open to the to um, like he was uh, open to hear any comments anytime, and this is really super important. Plus, at first he he didn't want to be in the film at all. Like he refused to have a voiceover. He refused to appear in the film. He refused to have the, you know, the the archival videos. He just wanted to tell the story of uh, Milad and um, mm. and Janil. And at a certain point, we told him it's impossible. We saw it's a film about you as well. Mm. And this is where he accepted. You know, he he accepted to lose control. And he said, okay, I'm gonna be like a small part of the film. And then the part became bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. And at the end, he, like we all understood that Rissam should be a, like a, a like a, a real protagonist, and this is why we like this is how we decided that he should be present and voiceover, that he should also appear somehow in reflections with the camera, you know. Like, and this is, a, and I think it's important to lose control sometimes and to mm -hmm. go with the flow and to follow the story you want to tell, and to like to organically follow what the film is trying to tell you as well, because the film is an entity in itself, so you cannot always decide what to do or not to do, you know? So this is really important, I think. Yeah, it's really good. Um, what, would you, what would you say to the people who are doing movies in general and documentaries in Lebanon in specific? Christian. Uh, this is a very hard question. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. <laughs> no, there, there is a... Um, the, I think that um, the first thing is try to find people and partners in crime that you really like and you really get along. Not, not in work opinions, but on a human level because it's a long-term relationship and it's, if you don't like the people you're working on, like it's gonna be super hard to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, second of all, I would say um, be open to any kind of opinion, to any kind of feedback, because like even the, the feedback that you're expecting the less uh, can help you in your vision. Mm -hmm. uh, you can say no to a lot of feedback. You can refuse some comments uh, because you have like you have an argument why you're refusing them. But like hearing like comments of people can help the film a lot because having distance. Mm -hmm. is really important because as filmmaker as filmmakers we live daily with the film and we need some distance and people who are not that close uh, to the film to give us some feedback to make the film like to get to give the film the full potential we're, we're giving uh, third of all don't get uh, discouraged mm -hmm. even uh, like as we said even if you get million no's a yes will come at a certain point and it will help you get to your uh, uh, to your objectives and, uh, and you know, like conflicts in cinema, even with the team is very fruitful. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid of conflicts, but like of fruitful conflicts, not only like uh, doing conflict mm -hmm. to have like, to have a conflict, but like, Ego like thing. we said a lot in, in this discussion that we Sam and I, and we Sam and I and Rena, like we were all on the mm -hmm. same wavelength, but we also had sometimes some harsh, you know, decisions mm -hmm. to take, uh, like, with Wissam, you had three or four uh, small fights <laughs> over the making of the film. Like one time he insisted on a shot that w didn't work with the edit, so we had a fight to remove it. And then uh, like the next time on the uh, for the poster, we also had a fight with which poster? I won. <laughs> <laughs> he won, yeah. I won for the shot, he won for the poster. <laughs> and, uh, and like... It's super important to know how to work as a team because I think films and filmmaking is a teamwork. If you don't know how to work with a team, then you're losing a huge part of the pleasure of making a mm -hmm. film and a huge part of, you know, the whole process of making a film. Yeah. Mm. I would agree with uh, with Christian, like, because filmmaking is a collective uh, work and just, like, uh, you should be very open and... Uh, and uh, like you, you should filter, you shouldn't like uh, do what everybody's telling you, just do everything, but just listen and digest what they are saying. And then if, it, uh, if you think that it's relevant what they're saying for your story, then you know what to do. If not, you can say no, but just uh, I think it's very important to be listened and to know 
how to work um, with the team and choose the right people you work with because it's like uh, it's almost like a marriage like uh, mm. you work with someone for five years you speak about the film every 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 day sometimes like when we're when we're editing intensely we had uh, daily uh, daily talk daily conversations and sometimes these people are working with you uh, uh, for free especially if you're not making a box office film or right? so, yeah. so the only thing they are uh, collaborating with you just because they like the story and or they have the same passion you share the same passion of uh, of telling this uh, story so it's, this is very important uh, like how you approach people and how do you work as a, as a team and I think uh, also for filmmakers to have a thick skin as I said before uh, no doesn't mean a no like you should try no no filmmaker uh, has has made it from the very first film or got the first uh, e email uh, approval email for a fund or for a film festival they 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 have all the, all been there and we've been there and uh, like everybody will will, be, will get rejections but maybe like what the people know is only the success stories but yeah. they, they, they 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 only know the tip of the iceberg but they don't know behind it like there are many deceptions many uh, many no's, many discouragement, many questions, self-doubt about your about yourself and about the film, if, if somebody's gonna watch your film. And one last thing, don't get charmed with the, with the context of what's happening socially, whether social or politically. Take your time to make your own film, a story that you want to tell, not because there's a, a specific context going on in the world, mm. whether it was, let's say, a pandemic, a political context, a social context, that you make uh, to make yeah, that you want to make the film about just be a bit patient and take some distance do you want do you really want to give birth to this film right now or wait some years because uh, time can be your ally sometimes and can really help you to to push the story forward yeah good words good word. yeah it's really super important especially now with what's happening around us um well it i have to i have to just you know, we, but uh, I feel like I can, I can, I can keep talking with you like for two, three hours, but <laughs> um, we'll do it maybe later. Uh, Wissam and Christian, thank you for being my guest today. Uh, uh, well, I hope that your movie will screen soon in, in, in France and in Lebanon again. Um, it was really super interesting to, to talk with you, to know more about the documentary and from, from a producer's point of view and from filmmaker's point of view. Uh, I wish that uh, I can see you guys soon face to face with no masks, hopefully. Okay. And uh, do, 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 do you have anything else to, to add? Like, no, for me, thanks for having us and for, uh, for this beautiful conversation. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to talk about uh, the films we make. Mm. And uh, I would like to say, like, to every person who's watching uh, this, if you uh, if you get the chance to watch the film online, for example, don't hesitate to send us some messages on Facebook and Instagram. We like we love feedback. <laughs> yeah. So uh, feel free to write us. We have pages for the film. We some you know the the names of the pages. <laughs> <laughs> better than me <laughs> on instagram it's it's uh, we are from their film and on facebook it's we are from there okay cool and uh this is personally the movie is really really super emotional beautiful beautifully shot and beautifully written it's just beautiful and this is what i said to to, to christian on um, when we were chatting i told him that I just burst in tears and many, like many times in the movie, and it's it's really a beautiful movie. I just I just want everyone to watch it. Uh, guys, thank you a lot again. Uh, wish you amazing luck with the upcoming projects, and um, see you soon. Thank you. Soon. Thank you, Gautier. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye.